Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unify Network Controller 7.3.76 has been released and it comes with the requirement of Java 11. This may cause some problems for people who are running the older Java versions that were with the other controllers and it may not update smoothly. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to set up your Unify controller from scratch. And of course I'll add in there the really simple process of backing up your old controller, grabbing the file and uploading it to your new one so everything works perfectly fine. Now I'm gonna be following the official Unify documentation. There are third parties out there that have scripts. I am aware of these scripts, but once you start having third party scripts from third party people that maintain them, you are now adding those third party people to the people that you trust to not do anything bad or not anything extra that you didn't want within that script. This also includes people who maintain Docker images. There are a couple different Docker images I've seen available, but none of them are from actual Ubiquity. The best way to install this to mitigate any risk or not have to add more people to the circle of trust that is installing software is to follow the Unify documentation for it as I do in this video, but use at your own risk. I'm aware of the other scripts. Uh, they're easy enough to find. There's some auto install scripts or Docker images, of course, but as I said, we're going to be following everything from the official. Before we jump into this video, let's thank a sponsor. Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Now here's the Unify Network Application documentation, and we'll jump right down to here where it says, Upgrade network application requires Java 11. Please note that Java 11 is required. It should be installed automatically when updating the application on the console on Unix, as well as given package installed with dependencies. If it worked for you, great. But if it didn't, that's why we're here for, or if you're doing a fresh or new install. Now here's the official documentation from Ubiquity, and this will be linked down below, as well as everything else I mentioned in this video. Unify network software installation for Ubuntu 18.04 and 16.04, Debian 8 and 9. Well, those are older versions of software, so we're gonna actually use Ubuntu 20.04. And if you ask why not the latest 22.04 LTS release, well, that's gonna lead you to this. It's not that you can't use it in this long thread over at Mongo, which I'll leave a link to in case you want to do this, it explains the extra steps you need to take and about some debate about the official support of MongoDB on the latest version of Ubuntu or Debian. For simplicity's sake, I would say go with the Ubuntu 20.04, or there are instructions that you can pull out of here of how to figure out the workarounds. So those are options I'll leave linked down below for you. Now, the next thing we'll run down through is requirements. And these are some pretty simple requirements. So do apt-get install uh, your CA certificates, app transport. Uh, and then each one of these is, has a click to copy. So you can put them in there and get it set up, including adding the key. I've simplified this and I do have a script, but don't worry, you can just look and see that it matches exactly this one. And I'll link to this over on my GitHub. I mostly did this for simplicity so I can simply copy and paste and drop the script in, or you can click the raw and just grab the file itself. Really easy to do. Now let's go over to my Ubuntu 20.04.5 LTS install. It is just a basic VM that I loaded, has a couple gigs of memory in it. Depending on how big of an install you need will vary how much memory you need. Four gigs of RAM is generally perfectly fine for this. The controller, especially on small installs, will actually work quite well with less. But for larger installs, you want to have a little bit of extra headroom. Now, as far as how to get that script or copy of everything in. I will leave this link down below, but we're just going to go grab this basic unify install.sh file. We're going to chmod plus x, the basic unify install. And let's quickly look at it though before we run it. You should always look at scripts you grab from the internet before you run them. And all this is is copy and pasting from the unify documentation. So first we're going to install the base needs and Java 11. So that's this line right here. The next one is add Ubiquity and Mongo to your sources. So you're gonna add the UI stable to 
the sources list, and then we're going to add the repos for MongoDB to the sources list. Then we're going to add trust for both of those. So we're going to trust the MongoDB and trust the Unify. And then we're going to add this right here, which is just hold at Java 11. That's important, not necessary for this time when we do the install, but in the future, if anything changes, you want to make sure there's a hold so it does not get out of spec for what the Unify expects and is supported right now. So that's why the hold is in there. And then finally, sudo app get update, and then you want to update install the Unify controller. So pretty simple here. So go ahead and back out of this and we'll just run it really quick and show you what happens. Go ahead and update the services. Does it want to update this? Yes. And the install is complete. It's really fast, depending, of course, on how fast of a system you have. It's really not that big of a download to get this set up. Now we have to go and configure it from the web interface, which is pretty simple. If we go IPA here, we can figure out what the IP address is of that server. So it is 10.13.37.104. So we type in 10.13.37.104, colon 8.443, the default port that this runs on. And here we are able to set up our network application. So this is really small, so let's make it a little bigger and zoom in here. YouTube demo or restore from backup. Now the restore from backup looks cover really quick because it's really simple. And for that, we're gonna jump over to one of my working controllers here. We're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to system. We're gonna scroll down here to backups, show more, and we can simply download the backup. Now this is something you should do before you do an install, you can have this at the ready if you have your existing controller working. And for me, because I just replaced our controller, the server itself with exactly the process you just seen, I went and downloaded this, shut that controller down and put the other one in its place and restored the backup. By selecting this, we are going to agree to the agreement and click next, because I'm just gonna go ahead and do a fresh install. And actually let's give it its original name, YouTube demo. Then we're gonna go next, username. I prefer the advanced setup that does not talk to their cloud. This is optional. If you want it to tie to your Ubiquiti account, you can, but they've made it optional. So I'm just going to leave those two off for remote access via unify.ui.com. And I only want to use local access so I can set up a Tom a password, a local email. No, I don't even want local email. So we're just going to put x at x.com because it wants something valid in there to make it happy. Next, enable auto backup. Definitely I'll leave that on there. Uh, I do have a device I can adopt, which is right here. We won't adopt it right now. Wi-Fi name, test, test one, two, three. Next, oh, make sure we got enough characters in there. There we go, finish. And now your controller is up and running. Now, one thing I really recommend here is you're going to go to settings, go down here. Click dark mode because it just looks awful if you don't have it in dark mode. I don't know why it's not dark mode default, but is what it is. Now, in terms of setting up multi-site management, they've actually made that also really simple here under system. You just check this box and you can then have the multi-site management to build multiple sites. So we have our demo site here, but then we can start adding new sites because people sometimes ask, well, where is that button? And they've made it pretty simple for doing multiple site management where you have many physically separate sites, or they could be actually mixed into the same physical location uh, and separate those. More on that in a future video that I'll do when I talk about setting up multi-hosting controllers, but that's all you have to do to get the system up and running. Uh, and of course we didn't adopt this device. I could click it now if I wanted to adopt it and would bring this in here and any other devices that are on the same network segment as, as this. And that's it for the Unify Network Controller Setup. Leave your comments and concerns down below or head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. 
And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.